Hi everyone, welcome back to the Power BI Zero to Hero playlist. My name is Sandeep Raturi, and in today's video, I am going to discuss one of the most commonly used data connectivity options in Power BI import mode. I will explain what import mode is, show you a practical example, and take you through its pros and cons. First, let's understand what import mode is. In Power BI, when you import data, you are essentially taking a copy of the data from the source and loading it into Power BI's data model. This allows you to work with the data locally, even offline. Since the data is stored in memory, it generally performs faster when you are creating visualizations or running queries. Now let me show you a quick example where I will import data from two different sources, one from Excel and the other from SQL Server. I have an Excel file containing customer data and I will load this into Power BI using import mode. To do this, I will go to the home tab, click on get data and select Excel workbook and then I will select customer file and click on open. After selecting the file, I can preview the data and click to load to bring it into Power BI desktop. So here you can see for customer file data has been loaded successfully. Now I will load the sales data from an SQL server. To load data from SQL server, you need to know the server name, database name and either the table name or a SQL query. To find this information, open SQL server and you can run this query, select at the rate, at the rate server name. This query will return your SQL server name. So here you can see this is my SQL server name and this is my database name demo db. Under this database, I have sales table and I will use this select query to get the data from SQL server. Next, I will go to the get data and this time I will select the SQL server and here you can enter the server name and database name. So this is my server name. Just copy the server name and you can paste here and my database name was demo db. After entering the server and database name, ensure that the data connectivity mode is set to import mode. The default mode is import so you don't need to change it and we will discuss directory mode in the next video. After that, I will enter the SQL query for sales data and Click on OK. So you can see the preview of data. Click on load. Now you can see here data has been loaded successfully for sales table. Just right click on the data set name, select rename and from here you can rename the table. So this is our sales table. In this method, we used SQL query to load the data from SQL server to Power BI. Now I will show you the alternate method where we will load the data directly from table. Go to the get data, select the SQL server, enter the server name, enter the DB name and ensure data connectivity mode set to import mode and click on OK. So we have four tables under demo DB and this is our server name. Select the table which we want to load. So here we will load the sales table. Just select the sales table and here you can see the preview of sales table data and click on load. So it will load the sales data into Power BI desktop. So I am not clicking on load because I already load the sales data to using SQL query. Now both data sets are loaded into Power BI. Go to the table view and here you can see the data for customer and sales table. This is the customer table data. Here we have customer ID, customer name, city and phone number. In sales table, we have sales ID, customer ID, product, quantity, sales date and total amount columns. And if you notice in both table, we have common column which is customer ID. So based on customer ID, we will create the relationship between both tables. 
So for that, go to the model view. And here, if you notice, Power BI is very smart. It automatically detects the relationship between both tables based on the common column name, which is customer ID and creates the relationship for you. Actually, this is a feature of Power BI. If you want to stop this auto detect relationship feature, you can manage it from the file setting. Now I will show you how you can create a manual relationship between both tables. So for that, first we will delete this auto detect relationship. Just select the relationship, right click and click on delete and give your confirmation and click on yes. So relationship has been deleted between both tables. Now select the customer ID column from the customer table, press and hold and drag it to the customer ID in the sales table. So this is the new relationship window. And here if you notice for customer and sales table, customer ID column is highlighted in both table. Means we are creating relationship between both table based on customer ID column. Click on save. So it will create the relationship between both table. You can see here. Now you can use the both data sets to create the visualizations in the report page. For an example, you can create a visuals where you can show the information customer wise sales. Now I will explain you how to retrieve a newly added record from the source. Let's suppose a new record has been added to the source. How will you get that record in Power BI? As you can see, the customer table currently has only five rows. Now I will add one new record to the customer Excel file. Open the Excel file and here you can see we have only five customer data. Now I am adding one more customer. Customer ID is 106. Customer name is Sandeep. City is Bangalore. And phone number is 555-86. 6, 7. Save the Excel file. Go back to the Power BI desktop. Go to the Home tab and click on Refresh. It will pull the all record from source and load into the Power BI desktop. So what Refresh button does in import mode? It clean the all previous records from Power BI file and load the all records again from the source. So now go to the table view and here you can see the new added record. Now I will explain you how you can check the data connectivity mode. Hover over the data set name and it will show you the storage mode and data refresh. So data refresh means it is the date and time when you refresh the data or when you load the data. Let's now talk about the process of import mode. First is faster performance. Since the data is loaded into memory, the visuals and queries run much faster compared to direct query. Second is offline access. Because the data is stored within the Power BI file, you can work on reports without needing to stay connected to the original data source. Third is full features. With import mode, you get access to the complete set of Power BI features, including DAX calculation, data modeling, and complex visuals. For an example, direct query does not support the time intelligence DAX functions. But you can use all time intelligence DAX function with import mode. Fourth is data compression. Power BI uses advanced compression algorithm. So even large data sets are compressed to take up less memory, making performance better. Now let's look at the cons. First is required data refresh. If your source data changes, you will need to refresh the data set in Power BI to keep the report updated. Second is file size limit. In Power BI Pro, there is a size limit of 1 GB per data set. For very large data set, you may need to either optimize the data or switch to the Power BI Premium. In my complete Power BI licensing guide video, I explain in detail about data set limit in Power BI Pro and in Power BI Premium. So you can check out that video to understand the data set limit in Power BI Pro and Premium. Third is no real time data. Since the data set is imported, it is not live. If you need a real time data, you will have to refresh the data set periodically. When to use import mode? It is best for scenario where you have manageable data sets, don't need real time data set and want to fast query performance. It is also idle when you are working offline or on reports that don't need constant connection to the data source. Summary of this video, import mode in Power BI is a great choice for fast and efficient data modeling and reporting. 
especially when you don't need real time updates and have data set that cannot fit within the size limit that's all for this video if you found this video helpful don't forget to like subscribe and hit the notification bell for more great content thanks for watching i will see you in the next video